In this part of the talk, I want to talk about using guided backpropagation in order to visualize why the network is outputting the correct thing most of the time, and also in order to explain its mistakes. So here's what guided backpropagation is, essentially. It's a way to visualize which pixels were important for a particular output of a network. So let's say that we have a network that does object classification, has one output called cat neuron that corresponds to there being a cat in the image. So let's say that you have an image i and cat neuron is high and what you want to do is you want to explain why it is that the cat neuron is high for this image. So one thing you could do is you could just compute the gradient of the cat neuron with respect to the input, right? So in other words, for each pixel, figure out if I change it a little bit, is it going to mess up cat neuron? Is it going to make it low, okay? Or is it really going to make it high? So if you compute it and then you visualize it, what you'll see is yes. So kind of the pixels that are on the cat do matter for the cat neuron. Those pixels do not matter. So it kind of works. However, the thing is very messy. So if you use guided backpropagation, on the other hand, what you'll see is that what's important for the cat output for this particular network, this particular image, is those kind of round eyes, okay? So how does it work exactly? Well, again, what you want to do is you want to explain why is it that the output PM is high. Now, instead of computing the gradient di PM by di X, what we'll do is we'll compute a modified version of that. So that version will basically compute the gradient, except it'll only take into account paths between each x and pm where all the weights are positive and all the activations are positive, so greater than zero along the path. Any path that's not like that is just going to get ignored. That's basically guided backpropagation. Why does it work? Well, because it just propagates, essentially considers propagating positive evidence between the x and pm. So positive evidence that pm should be higher rather than mixed evidence. So what do I mean by that? So consider this pixel on the cat where you could have like an output that's cat and output that says no cat. For example, it might say dog or something. Okay. So how does it work? So here, this pixel is part of this patch. And let's say that this patch makes the dog ear at those coordinates neuron be high. If it does do that, then along the path here, there would be negative weights. So you want to ignore that part. You want to just consider this part where, let's say, the path to cat from here to here is all positive weights and all activated neurons. Okay? So because you would just be adding stuff here, you would not be subtracting stuff when computing the gradient because, of course, the weights here are negative and you're computing the cat by the, the, this pixel. This pixel would look, uh, so this patch would look cleaner because you would consider that this is a cat eye, but you would not consider the fact that this kind of looks like a dog here. 